In this video, we're going to go through each of the trig functions and make sense of their derivatives. So sine and cosine we had already done, but I'll just go through those again. We did these in a graphical way. So we started with the graph of sine, which is right here in blue. And then we just uh, looked at the different parts of it. So we started here at each maximum point. My slope of the tangent line is going horizontally and that relates to an x-intercept. And at each minimum, the slope of my tangent line is also going horizontally. And that's why you see on the red graph, which is the derivative, I have all those zeros. So because my tangent line slope is zero, my derivative is going to hit the zero. Next, I'm going to pay attention to the increasing and decreasing intervals. And I'm going to section this out a piece at a time. On this first interval, what we see is our sine function is increasing. And we know that when a function is increasing, it has positive slopes. Therefore, my derivative is positive, in other words, above the x-axis. And that's why my derivative graph, this red one, stays above the x-axis on that interval. And if I shift over and look at my next interval, now sine is decreasing in this whole interval which means my slopes are negative, which means my derivative is negative. So when I go to draw my derivative, I have to stay below the x-axis where I have negative y values. And now I'm back increasing again and positive derivative. So I am above the x-axis. And now I'm decreasing again with my sine graph. Therefore, my derivative graph will be below the x-axis. And when I put that all together, I have this red graph, which is my derivative graph, which I recognize to be cosine. So my graph shows me that the derivative of sine x is simply cosine x. Next up is the derivative of the cosine function. And we'll do this in a similar way to the sine. So we're going to look at the graph of the cosine function first, which is this red one right here. And we're going to take an interval at a time. We're going to focus on the maximums. And at a maximum, I have a slope of 0. So my derivative graph is going to hit 0. And the same for the minimums. And so every time I have a max or a min, that relates to a 0 on the derivative graph. And then I'm going to pay attention to the increasing and decreasing intervals. So where my original function is decreasing. So right here where this function is decreasing, I know that my derivative is going to stay below the x-axis. And then where this function begins to increase, I pop above the x-axis and I stay positive. And then where this function is decreasing, my derivative is negative. And then when my original function is increasing, my derivative is positive. And when I put all of that together, I end up with this green graph. And this green graph is actually the sine graph that's been reflected across the x-axis. So the derivative of cosine x is going to be negative sine x. The remaining four derivatives we're going to do using trig identities. And I have several written over here on the right side. And all an identity is is a statement that is always true no matter what x you put in. So when I do the derivative of tangent x, I'm first going to use this first identity here that says tangent x is simply sine x divided by cosine x, and I make that substitution. So I'm just going to substitute in place of tangent x. I'm going to put sine x over cosine x. And then once I look at this, I can see that this is a quotient, and now I'm going to use the quotient rule. And so here's my quotient rule. So there's my bottom function times derivative of sine x is cosine x minus the top times derivative of cosine x is negative sine x all over the bottom function squared. And I have a little note over here. I could have written that without the parentheses by putting the little exponent in between the sine and the x, or in this case, between the cosine and the x. So you can write it either way. This is typically the way you're going to see it written, uh, like I have over here on the right, because it is slightly shorter because you don't have to have the parentheses around it. 
So from here, I am just going to go and simplify things a bit. So cosine x times cosine x is cosine squared x. And the two negatives here make this go positive, And that is a sine squared x. And if you look over here, there's a Pythagorean identity that says sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And that is exactly what I have sitting in this numerator here. So I'm going to replace that entire numerator with a 1. And this becomes 1 over cosine squared x. And then I have another identity over here that says when I have 1 over cosine x, that is the same thing as secant x. So now I'm going to replace this with a secant squared x. And this tells me that the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. The cotangent derivative is going to pretty much follow a similar pattern as the tangent did. So I'm first going to start by using this identity over here that says cotangent x is cosine x over sine x. And now I'm going to do a quotient rule. So here's what my initial quotient rule looks like. There's my bottom times derivative of the top minus top times derivative of the bottom all over the bottom function squared. And now I'm just going to multiply in that numerator. And when I'm sitting here, I almost have that same identity, that same Pythagorean identity, except I have negatives on here. So I'm going to factor out the negative 1 and then apply that identity. So that gets me here. And now I can see that this, what I have in the parentheses, is just going to be a 1. And so I replace that with a 1. And 1 over sine squared x, I look over here, 1 over sine x is cosecant x. So 1 over sine squared x is going to be cosecant squared x. And that negative carries down as well. So the derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. For the derivative of the secant function, I'm first going to use this identity and rewrite secant x as 1 over cosine. And again, I'm back into the situation where I'm just going to use a quotient rule. And my quotient rule puts me here. So I can see that this is just going to be 0. And my two negatives are going to turn that sine x positive. And now in order to simplify this, I'm going to take that cosine squared x and I'm going to write it as two separate factors. So one of those cosines I've put under the sine and the other one I'm going to put underneath 1. And I can see sine x over cosine x is just a tangent. And this 1 over cosine x is a secant. So my derivative of the secant x is just tangent x secant x. The cosecant derivative is going to be very similar to the secant derivative. So I'm first going to start by using the fact that cosecant x is 1 over sine. So I do that rewrite. And now I'm going to do a quotient rule. And just like with the secant derivative, that first part is just going to zero out. And I'm simply left with negative cosine x over sine squared x. And I'm going to rewrite that sine squared x as 2 sine x's. One of them is going to go under a cosine, and one of them is going to go under a 1. And then I just apply my identities. So cosine x over sine x is cotangent. So this is a negative cotangent. And 1 over sine x over here is cosecant x. So I'm going to replace that 1 over sine x with a cosecant x. And that gives me my cosecant derivative is negative cotangent x cosecant x.